The Literature Review provides an overview of current knowledge and recent research on the topic. A good Literature Review identifies both the current trends, what scientists currently know about the subject, and also gaps, aspects of what is currently not known, or what new questions need to be asked and answered. Why do we do it? Because the Literature Review surveys a broad range of relevant sources, it allows you to get a better understanding of a subject than reading one or two articles. Writing a literature review is thus a great way to really get to know your topic. Another reason why literature reviews are important is that they help us identify what has already been researched and found and what questions experts in the field are asking. This way, you do not have to reinvent the wheel but pick up on the best research in the area. By now you are familiar with the structure of a scientific article and have done basic analysis, so you are quite ready to move to the next level, synthesizing observations from a number of studies. The task can be challenging, and to make it easier, it may help to think of it as a three-step process. In the first step, you gather and analyze your sources. This is where you take good notes and ask analytical questions. The second step is evaluation and synthesis, and the third one is drafting and polishing. The first thing to keep in mind when gathering and analyzing sources is doing a good database search and keeping track of your search terms, as well as of what you found. This way you know what you are doing and can always go back to find new information. It will be important to take notes. For each article, make sure you identify its main aim and contribution. The aim tells you what the authors wanted to find and the contribution, usually found in the discussion, is the new knowledge the authors have contributed by answering their main research question and interpreting their results. When taking notes, pay attention to current trends, discoveries, but also gaps, in other words, what is currently known and what is not known. You can ask questions like those in the video on how to read a scientific article, or start with these three basic questions. What is the main aim of the article? What does the article contribute to the conversation? And what interesting points or problems can you identify? And of course, always remember to note where the information is coming from and try to mark ideas rather than full sentences so that you do not end up simply copying your sources and plagiarizing. The second step is evaluation and synthesis. This is where you look at your sources and begin identifying strengths, limitations or challenges. You may ask yourself about the strengths and weaknesses of research as it identified in the articles you have read. You may also ask yourself what challenges or new relevant findings you have discovered. As you evaluate your sources, you will begin to get a picture not only of what the researchers have been doing, but also of how you may want to approach your own review. An outline will help. This is where you get a sense of the main ideas you want to write about and the evidence you have to support them. Note the points you want to make what evidence you have to support them, and what sources it is coming from. Make sure you understand what you're trying to express. If you're not quite sure, simply go back to the article or your notes, or look up more information. As your outline begins to develop, you will begin to identify interesting issues or problems, and also areas you may want to research in more depth. For example, if you are reviewing literature on tuberculosis, you could begin with four ideas. First, significance and prevalence of tuberculosis. Second, pathogenesis and latent versus active tuberculosis. Third, strategies of dealing with tuberculosis. And finally, most recent research trends. Then you can expand your outline. For idea one, you have a source that reviews a history of tuberculosis written by Smith, an overview of trends of tuberculosis in developing countries by Wang and Smith, and an analysis of current patterns of spread of tuberculosis. And you can repeat the process for the remaining ideas. Now that you have jotted down your preliminary thoughts and sources, you can begin developing your thoughts further. For this, ask yourself the following questions. Do the sources provide you with enough information? Are there additional ideas or evidence you need to provide to make sense of this information? Have you identified relevant trends and gaps? Do you have a clear idea of what you would like to say regarding this? And finally, can you express your thinking in a coherent narrative? And this last question is perhaps the most important because in the end, you will need to draw all these ideas together and write a coherent paragraph. 
As you begin to answer these questions, you will get a more clear idea of what you know and what you still need to know, and a very good foundation for writing the actual assignment. As your outline grows and gets more detailed, you may end up reorganizing its structure. For example, you may want to mention pathogenesis first. That kind of rearrangement is perfectly normal when writing literature reviews. As you gain a better understanding, your overall view of the topic and of the review may change. When you feel like things are beginning to make sense and you can express an idea or a cluster of ideas in writing, you are ready to begin your draft. Some people like to draft very early in the process. Others like to have a strong outline before they begin to write. There is no perfect method, just try what works for you. But a draft will be essential. This is where you can practice expressing your thoughts, change your mind, and show that you really understand your topic before you submit the final review for marking. It may help to think about how you would introduce a topic, for example. A review, after all, is an essay and needs a clear introduction. As you begin to translate your outline into a draft, also ask yourself whether the ideas and sub-ideas follow in logical order, whether they tell an intelligible, coherent story, or whether they need to be changed in order to make sense. Your first draft will not be perfect. As a matter of fact, it is normal for first drafts to be messy and all over the place, but keep working. See how you can transform a cluster of sentences or information into a clear paragraph. And when you write a paragraph, always ask yourself what main idea it expresses. Make sure you actually write that idea down. Sometimes you will find that a paragraph is trying to express several ideas. In that case, divide up a single paragraph into several as needed. Here's an example of such a draft paragraph. In this case, it is part of an early draft of a review of literature on tuberculosis. On surface, this doesn't look that bad at all. The student has a very good idea, but the draft at this point is a series of unrelated statements. We have a first sentence where they're mentioning an author with three strategies of dealing with tuberculosis, but then we have other sources that present other alternative strategies for dealing with it. So it's not very clear what exactly is the student trying to say. Are they arguing with Smith? Are they proposing the other evidence as contradictory or are they just expressing one single idea? So this is something to really, really think about and um, consider in your draft. Um, the other thing to think about is how you are actually using the sources, because in this case, we have according to Smith, according to Wang, but Sawyer and all said this. So we have a lot of author prominent citation where you actually use the name of the author in your own sentence. Think about this when you write your draft, because if your draft ends up being a statement of, of 20, 30, according to this, according to that, according to this, according to that. It gets very, very tedious, and it's very unclear what it is that you're actually trying to say with these sources. Uh, what you may do is to decide that you use the author's name when you really want to make a strong point about a particular article, or when you find that some articles are really extraordinary or the authors are authorities. Otherwise, it is perfectly fine to write what you want to say and put the author in brackets, just like we have at the end of this paragraph with Yomamoshi 2016, um, and you can just focus on the content rather than focus on the author. So what should this student do next? First of all, they probably should rewrite the sentences so they tell a logically organized story, and this will be up to you to decide. What are you trying to say? What is your story? How do you hold these sentences together? And in this case, we probably have several stories which could be broken into separate paragraphs. So what you actually do is refine your thinking, where the original idea had to do with strategies, and it was a very cluttered paragraph where you pretty much plopped everything that you found relevant to the topic. You can now think about a new structure. And what you may want to do is start with one or two paragraphs just describing strategies in general. And so be overviews of strategies, talk about treatment, talk about public health, and see how that holds together. And then you might add a paragraph or two about the challenges that are faced. And this way it's going to become clear that in one side you're discussing strategies and then you're building up challenging uh, challenges as, as another topic area. As your draft gets more developed, you can begin to read sections out loud and pay attention to how they express what you actually want to say and how the sentences and ideas flow from each other in logical order. Um, and very, very important thing to consider is when you do a final proof is to look at your paragraphs and really ask yourself, what does each paragraph say? Is there a clear message? And do I say it? 
And finally, do not forget to proofread it and draft carefully before submission. Give yourself enough time.